Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. Today's video, I want to continue planting in my garden and specifically in the back of my garden. I just saw that I recently have a couple of more subscribers. So first of all, thank you so much. If you decide to subscribe to my channel and I think this is a good momentum to quickly introduce myself to you again. My name is Daniel. I am a pure hobby gardener and I love to take you with me on my journey through developing this entire garden. So there are different planting videos, potting videos. I'll take you with me to the vegetable garden. So a little bit of everything. I am gardening here at the south coast of the Baltic Sea. It is a zone 7B. I'm outside the city of Gdańsk in the great bay of Gdańsk and the garden itself is on top of a dike which means it is very much exposed to wind and this is the reason I'm standing with you on the front garden why there are so many hedges here because in my back there is a river and this is sometimes where the wind travels from east and there is a very cold wind especially in winter so those hedges are vital. The back of the garden is a slope which I laid out in terraces and then the rear end of the garden there's a narrow strip which I'm just developing part of it will be my new vegetable garden but the bigger part will be an extension of my ornamental garden and this is exactly where I want to plant a clematis today with you but not one of those climbing varieties and this is why I think this video will be really interesting for a lot of you because clematis are divided into three different groups and depending on which group you are having in your garden that dictates how to prune your clematis and also how they grow differently so what I'm going to grow today is not a climbing variety so how I want to structure today's video is first of all I want to take you with me in the back of a garden show you this area and show you what I recently did there just tour you around a little bit then really take the momentum to give you some information about the clematis plant together with you and then well the before and after impact won't be so big let's face it because you can tell in my back everything's still very small but still I want to show you where I planted how I planted because then later on in the year when I do a garden tour and hopefully this plant will be a nice full bloom we can just travel back in time and remember how it was in early spring when I stood here in my winter jacket so hope you are excited to join me in my planting video today. So this is the rear end of the garden so to my right this is where the garden literally ends and this is where it all opens up to farmland and to the landscape so this is southwest facing so if I swing around this is west which means that this entire area is sun filled and it's amazing to grow vegetables what I did is I put up two cold frames. I'm so excited about them. So this is one of the things that I did. I'm standing at my new vegetable garden. I'm not going to show you too much about it because I will do an entire video about my vegetable garden and what I plan on doing here. But you can tell that I was quite busy in this entire area. So let's just walk around a little bit. Here in the front to my left, this is where it starts with these tiny little wicker fences that I make out of hazel. And then there it stands. This is where I want to grow my clematis. And I've already built a little bit of a support system for it, which I'm going to give you more information about it in a moment. So let me just reach for the label. This is what I want to plant. Clematis arabella, clematis integrifolia. I just say it fast to make sure that it sounds somehow right. Beautiful, isn't it? Perfect. Nice purple flowers, one of my favorite colors. So I think it will be fantastic. This is how it looks already. A lot of nice, good, vigorous stems coming from here. So a lovely, lovely plant. The way on how I lay out this entire area is that I want to have these pathways curving through. So there won't be any lawn. Everything will be mulched. There are a couple of shrubs here. There are a couple of perennials and grasses. And I really just want to make it an area where you can just meander through. So this is why I started putting in these beautiful fence sections in here but I ran out of hazel, so this is as much as I could do. What I already have in here are some daylilies. These are some that I planted with you last autumn and they look all fantastic, very vigorous, they're all coming back to life, which is really wonderful. So what else is or what else happened here is that I really worked my way through and took out a lot and a lot of those pesky perennial grass that is growing here. So this is not really like a natural meadow even. Most of what is growing in this area is just this grass and unfortunately it has runners so you really need to be very thorough in the process and take out everything. You see a pot, I'm not going to say too much about it, there will be more planting videos because I ordered a really exciting shrub but what I did is I had a lot of grasses as offspring in the upper garden so I put a nice patch here and if we continue walking there's some of those corners that I just planted with you in the upper garden so I thought maybe they would be really nice here it's very moist and damp down here so I think they'd be 
perfect, uh, very happy and very much at home here. More grasses, more bearded iris. There is an elder shrub here which I left and I tried to build a nice framework and uh, structure out of it. So I just left four really nice strong main branches and based on that I think that I will develop something really nice. So I found my way all the way up until here and then everything in the back still might need some work of weeding. So basically what grows here predominantly is this grass here, which doesn't look horrible, but it really is horrible because it has these runners that grow underneath the surface and every single bit of root that you leave in the ground is going to spring up again and it is going to produce another plant. The other thing that was growing here massively and I've taken out all of them are blackberries, but unfortunately they don't fruit well now. Okay, now I'm distracted. Look who's with us, Alfie. Alfie and her walnut. So Alfie wants to play with the walnut apparently, so in a moment I need to throw it somewhere. So she's really happy and she's going to join us in today's video, obviously. So this is how this area looks at the moment. In the back there's a vegetable garden, so I'm not going to show you too much about it. But I think that I've really made a lot of nice, good progress in this area. I'm very happy about it. And a lot of the videos that I will do are going to happen here because there's a lot of space that can be filled with plants. One last thing that I did, I think I didn't mention it before, is I put some cuttings, some wood cuttings from Elder in the ground here uh, to define the path. Pathway. So when I plant that I know where my pathways are going and how they're swinging around and meandering through this area. So I'm really excited about that. But now I'm going to take the momentum to give you some information about the clematis. Well, maybe before I'm going to give you the information about the clematis, I need to play with somebody, right? Right? Do I need to take the nut? Do I need to take this walnut? Do you want to have this walnut? Do you really want to have it? You're sure? Ooh. There it is. Well, somewhere it is. Let's see if she finds it. I think in a moment. Otherwise, she brings me a new walnut. As always, before I plant something, I just always love to take this moment and give you some key information about the specimens, just in case if you want to grow it in your own garden, but especially with clematis, it's really worth knowing what kind of clematis you grow in your garden. Because as I said before, clematis are divided into three different groups. And depending on what kind of group you grow in your garden, that dictates how they will grow and how you need to prune them. So for me, clematis most of the time are those plants that you grow into your tree or on a trellis maybe on the house wall but all the clematis that sit in group three such as this one here they grow different they grow more like perennials or if you want so kind of like shrubs so that definitely opens up an entire new way on how to use them in your garden because then you really incorporate them in your borders when you grow a variety like this you really need to check how high they can grow because even that varies there are some varieties that stay a little bit on the smaller size, so maybe like 30 to 50 centimeters, but this one here can grow 1 meter 20 to 1 meter 50. And there the important thing is that it needs a support system because still it cannot hold itself upright. So some people say you can just grow it in between shrubs so that the shrubs will hold the weight of the plant. Traditionally what a lot of people do is they will push some hazel cuttings in the ground so that they will support this clematis. But then I came across this system here which I think is really nice looking and it's supposed to work so I'm really excited to give you updates about it. I saw this in England and quintessentially what it is you take hazel cuttings. You take two stems and basically one cutting point is here, one cutting point is there. You take the two branches, you twist them together, you bend them and then you push them into the ground. I hope they won't take root. This is the only concern that I have about this but let's see. I have an eye on it. If they take root I'm just going to cut that probably but even if they take root maybe we'll be nice with the clematis so let's see because we'll Willows take root easily. So they will grow to quite a nice big height and then I can have a lot of space here to develop this border because when they grow so tall they are better if they are somewhere in the back and then towards the front I can put some grasses. I already put some aquilegia here. I want to incorporate some roses. So I think in general this will be a really beautiful display. Now looking at the plant, the leaves, they are green. They are not going to change color throughout autumn and in winter they will lose their leaves. You really plant them for the blooms and in this variety they are quite spectacular. Beautiful beautiful mid-purple tone, um, 5 to 10 centimeters in size for an individual flower, which is big for me, but according to my research, this is a mid size for clematis. For me, this is already quite big, to be honest, like 10 centimeters for a bloom. This is that. It's big. It's beautiful. Um, 
One more thing about flowers, yeah. July to September is a flowering time. That is definitely important. So you always need to know, obviously, when does your plant come to bloom because then you know what to plant in combination with that. Then in terms of location, it thrives best in sun. It tolerates partly shade, but it doesn't like when the foot of the plant is exposed to full sun. I mulch everything, which is quite good for clematis, but underplanting is definitely vital. So having aqualegia here, having some grasses there, some roses, this is definitely going to provide enough shade for the base of the plant so that this is not exposed to the fullest sun. When it comes in soil it is not that fuzzy but it likes to have a nice rich soil and this is why I already dug out a good decent size of a planting hole and I will enrich the soil with a mixture. I've prepared some homegrown compost with some fresh garden soil and I will also mix some organic bone chips under it and this is exactly what I'm going to do now. So let's put the plant somewhere where it's not blocking the view maybe. So here's my bucket with my starting soil. Well, I already told you that depending on which group your clematis is, this dictates the pruning regime. And as the year progresses, I plan on planting different kinds of clematis so I can talk hopefully about all the different kind of groups. So clematis that sit in group three, like this one here, and that grow like perennials, they will be cut back in around March time, basically when you prune all or when you cut back all of the perennials in your garden and uh, you will cut it back between 30 to 50 centimeters above ground level and the reason for it is that if you do so it will produce more and more side branches and over the years it will produce a nice sturdy uh, shrub in a way almost like an it will just have a lot of new branches and it's supposed to be more sturdy because it has a nice good base. I hope I haven't pushed too much soil in here now. So you could see I use a lot of nice fresh garden soil and then I put some organic bone chips in there as my starting fertilizer because microorganisms come in and break it down into nitrogen. I ordered these online so again I have no idea what to expect but it has a great root system. It's not really pot bound. Clematis they normally have really nice fleshy roots so what I would do is just come and gently and release some of these roots to make sure that they don't start growing pot bound. Pot bound basically means that the roots are are very tight in the container and they start growing round and round and then they're not growing outwards and this is not so good. So here I think it's a good idea even though it's not really pot bound to tease out some of those big fleshy roots especially at the base here but no it looks good. This is a really nice strong root system perfect looking plant. If you do too much sometimes you can even harm the plant like it's really do it gently and don't try to disturb the root system too much though. So this looks great because what you want is that the roots grow outwards. So in it goes here into my framework and then make sure that I plant it dead level. So now we just come in with the rest of my soil that I've prepared. Push it all in here and then really firm it in nicely. I mean we're still at the time where I can have late frost in the year. So still I don't want to have any air pockets because I definitely don't want that in my fresh new planted plant any frost is going to come in. I'm still going to mulch it. I won't water it because well first of all it stood here already for a while. We had rain for two days so the plant in itself was already wet and there's more rain on the way. So really at this time of the year I don't really water in. Later on in the year if I plant something I would always say give it a good soak when you plant something but here I think this should be okay because in two days there's more rain in the forecast. This is all there is. I'm going to come with some fresh mulch. Mulch it now. Maybe snip off some of these old branches. I need to see. Maybe I'll leave them for a moment to see maybe something nice or good is still going to come out of them. But yeah. I'm going to give you one last look once everything is mulched in. I'm so happy. I think this is going to look really pretty here when it really comes with more vigorous growth and then imagine these beautiful flowers here. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Everything around the clematis is freshly mulched in and I love to use mulch because what it does is it suppresses weeds and mainly 
it holds the moisture in the ground and it really works well. So if I go a little closer, this is going to be difficult now with the framework here, I see, but you can see a lot of fresh shoots are appearing. So I'm really happy about this. And you can also see some of the dead branches from last year. So I can definitely come in here and snip some of those off. And you can tell one does not look happy because we had late frost and this is what happens, unfortunately, but still a lot and a lot of really nice fresh shoots coming from the base of the plant. So this is going to be really beautiful and vigorous then I have some of my aquilegia here they will come to bloom and pink all of those are offspring and they are a mixture of different kinds I'm not really sure how how they will come to bloom if they will be doubles or not then there is one volunteer hyacinth here not so sure if it's really a volunteer probably when I was just like using some of the soil from old containers I just distributed in here and this is what popped up but yeah this is what I did and this is a nice step forward into developing this entire area here so definitely some of videos are going to happen here I'm really excited to take you with me on the journey you guys that's it for today's video my backdrop looks really horrible by the way right now but the thing is like I know that in half a year from now not even like three four months from now is going to change so drastically so I'm really excited to take you with me on a garden tour then and show you how everything looks in bloom still this is going to take a while a lot of work is going to happen in this area here but I'm really excited to take you with me on the journey so all I can say now is thank you so much for watching today's video I hope you enjoyed it I hope it was interesting for you thank you if you decide to subscribe to my channel if you give me a thumbs up and I would honestly love to welcome you next time around in my garden so up until then take care guys bye Thank you.